Good morning, everybody. I thank you for your coming and the present. So today, I request this press conference to clarify the principal position of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea with regard to the incident of dispossessing our cargo ship wise honest by United States. As it is reported, the last on May 9, United States has committed unlawful and outrageous acts of dispossessing our cargo ship wise honest by forcibly taking it to the American Samoa under the pretext of unilateral sanctions and violation of its domestic law. We are condemning in strongest terms this act of dispossessing of our cargo ship because this incident is early product of an extreme hostile policy of the United States against DPRK. It is well known that the United States has imposed unilateral sanctions against DPRK by issuing executive order and legislating a number of sanction acts, like North Korea Sanction Enforcement Act 2013 and North Korea Sanction and Policy Enhancement Act 2016, etc. However, unilateral sanctions and domestic law, which the United States has employed as a legal ground of dispossessing our cargo ship, is clearly illegality and injustice. Because unilateral sanctions and extraterritorial application of national jurisdiction of the third country cannot be justified in any case and in any circumstances under the international law. Actually, until now, just here at the UN headquarters, UN General Assembly adopted so many resolutions denouncing unilateral sanctions and unilateral economic coercive measures as illegal act against the principle enshrined the UN Charter. Especially 2004, UN General Assembly adopted the UN Convention on Jurisdictional Immunity of the states and their property. This UN Convention has a very important international public law that all states must adhere in the relation with other countries. According to this UN Convention, any sovereign states and their property cannot be subject to the national jurisdiction of the other countries. This UN Convention is also applicable to the peremptory norm and compelling law. The peremptory norm is fundamental principle of the international law that is accepted by international community of the states from which no derogation is permitted. Also, in the light of the UN Charter and the relevant international the law, the unilateral sanctions and extraterritorial application of national jurisdiction is clearly violated the principle of the legal equality of the states and the principle for respect for the dignity of national sovereignty and non-interference internal affairs of others. Also, it is clearly violated by other principles recognized through international law, such as right to development and declaration of the friendly relations. In a nutshell, United States did not care about this old international law and the violated principle recognized universally the worldwide. Moreover, United States has committed sovereignty infringing acts of dispossessing our cargo ship where DPRK's sovereignty is fully exercised. Speaking to the wise honest, it is a state-owned ship. Also, it is a property of our republic. We regard it 
as a part of our territory where our sovereignty is fully exercised. As mentioned in the statement of the spokesman, our foreign ministry of DPRK issued on May 14, the latest act of the United States constituted extension of the American method of calculation for putting pressure upon to us to kneel down by means of the maximum pressure. Also, it is outright denial of the underlying spirit of June 12 DPRK USA joint statement which committed establishing new bilateral relations. Therefore, the United States should deliberate and think over the consequence of its after religious acts might have on the future development. Also, the United States must return our cargo ship without a delay. With regard to this issue, yeah, last week I sent the letter to the Secretary General in order to inform our principal positions and I requested him take, to take the necessary measures as the way of contributing the stability in Korean Peninsula. Also, I requested him to circulate my letter as official document of current session of General, General Assembly. So now, the, my country carefully watch every move of the United States hereafter. Thank you for your attention. And then, OK. Ambassador, uh, I, can we ask questions? OK, just a moment. Uh, I'll take a few questions. And then before I open this floor, the, I'll let you know the, I'll, I'll take the question in the package and answer very briefly. Okay, please. James Bays from Al Jazeera. Can you be clear, how will this act, seizing the cargo ship, alter the process that was started with President Trump and Chairman Kim? because it's a now stalled process. Do they have to give back the cargo ship before there will be more talks? Can you make that clear? And do you expect any progress when President Trump heads to the Korean Peninsula soon? OK. And then, yes, please, madam. Sorry I didn't get here fast enough. Uh, Edith Lutterer from the Associated Press. On behalf of the United Nations Correspondents Association, thank you very much for doing this press conference, and please come back and speak to us as often as you can. Um, thank you. My, my question is um, the impact, to follow up on the question from my colleague James Bays, um, what is the impact of this kind of action by the United States uh, going to have also on relations between the DPRK and the Republic of Korea? And do you expect relations between the two Koreas to keep progressing while this impasse um, goes on with the Trump administration? And with the Trump administration, are there any contacts at all going on to um, possibly talk about a third summit? Thank you. OK, thank you. Yes, please, Mother. Uh, thank you, Ambassador. Uh, it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Specifically on the seizure, can you say if the Wise Honest was carrying any contraband, any materials that, are vi that violate UN sanctions? Thank you. Okay, madam, please. It's Rhonda Haubin, and I have a blog at, ta at netizen blog at Tageseitung uh, website. My question is: There were three principles in your Singapore, in the in the Singapore summit. Those were to establish newer relations, to build a lasting and stable peace on the Korean Peninsula, and to work toward the complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. This obviously is contrary to all of that, those three principles. And I thought what's happened since then uh, doesn't quite take these into account. 
Is there some way to put these principles back on the front burner? Because they are a set of different principles than has seemed to dominate. And they are a set of principles that, that has helped up to now to, to when they are applied, it does help relations between the US and DPRK. So is there anything that can happen that, that can be done um, that we can help to bring these principles to the fore again? Thank you. OK. Yeah. Thank you, Ambassador. My name is Fumita Kasato from Japan TV NHK. My question is about uh, the uh, DPRK Supreme Leader always reiterated the the confidence building is the, the basic requirement for improving the relationship between the U.S. and the DPRK. So h how much do you think uh, this U.S. action uh, undermine the uh, confidence building between two countries? Yes, the lady. Thank you very much, Ambassador. My name is Haruyo Miyamoto from TBS, Tokyo Broadcasting System. And my question is, would you tell us a little bit about the impact of the sanction, UN Security Council sanction, that's having impact on your, civil, uh, on your population? And would you describe a little bit about the impact of the sanctions? OK. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. I'm Genji Yamaguchi from Kyoto News Japan. Uh, so, and last week's letter, uh, you referred to urgent measures. Um, so can you elaborate more about what kind of urgent measure do you want? Thank you. And then please Ambassador, me. yes, Eric Sean at Fox News. Does your government have any plans to apologize for the torture and killing of the young American Otto Warmbier? And do you have any statement for the Warmbier family, sir? Will you prosecute those who are responsible for his torture and murder? Is there anything you want to say? Hmm. Okay, there is any more question? Okay, you, please. Yeah, okay, you. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm. Okay, the until now so many questions was raised. So today, the I organized this press conference to clarify our positions with regard to the incident of the wise honest case. Therefore, uh, among your questions, the some question is directly related to wise honest. There's some question is the separated issues. So I briefly uh, answered your questions uh, generally. So uh, this the incident is only man-made incident with intervention of the United States. Also, the, my country has neither recognized nor accepts sanction resolution of the U.S. Security Council. And then we will sharply watch every move of the United States with regard to these issues. And then what is clear, the outrageous act taken by the United States is denial, underlying spirit of June 12 DPRG USA joint statement. Everything is dependent on the United States. We will sharply watch the reaction of the United States. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your the attention. And then with regard to the another the questions, I hope to take another chance to have the press conference to explain our position. Thank you for today. Thank you.